Hannah here from Bearsden Essentials. Today, we are gonna be talking about the final step in our How to Knit series for creating a lovely twisted turban headband in garter stitch. So you've finished your knitting, you've successfully cast it on, knitted the number of inches you need to for your desired size, and successfully cast it off. So now you're actually done with the knitting needles for this project, so you can put these to your side. And all you need is your piece, a darning needle, and then at the end, your scissors. Like I mentioned in my previous video, I really love this clover needle cutter just because of the fact that it's so easy to carry around with me and I'm not worried about accidentally poking myself or cutting the yarn, having it sit in with my knitting in a bag. In order to create this twist, you're actually gonna be working on sewing the edges together. So it's deceptive in that it looks very complex, but it's actually pretty simple to create. So I'm gonna put this aside. And the first step is to lay your piece flat horizontally with the right side facing up. So if you're a new knitter, you might be asking, well, what is the right side? Since it's garter stitch, both sides are technically identical, so it doesn't really matter. You just wanna pick whichever side you think looks nicest and lay it facing up. When you progress to more advanced patterns involving both purls and other stitches, this distinction is gonna matter more. You will have the right side, which is the side that faces the world. So in this case, it's this side and the wrong side, which is the side that's gonna be facing inwards towards your body. So that's just an easy heuristic for remembering that for the future. So, and then you're gonna fold both of the ends together like this. Kind of like if you're from New York, you fold your pizza like this and you let the oil drip off onto your plate and then you eat it. If you're not from New York, now you know how we prefer to eat our pizza. Although I don't think there's much mystery to that. So you have your ends folded, and then you're gonna move them closer together towards one another in the middle. Now, the next step, you're gonna actually place both ends together. So it's kind of like Pac-Man where they eat one another. So you're gonna fold, place them together so that they hug one another. It's kind of like creating a four-decker sandwich. Be careful not to do this where you just place both of them on top of one another because that won't create the twist. So remember it's like Pac-Man where they should be eating one another. So I'm just gonna pull my yarn out so it doesn't get jammed. So you have this nice four-decker sandwich. You want to place them together so that the four edges, all of them are hug and flush with one another. So you don't want it like this and you don't want to have one of them too far down, you want all four edges sitting as flush as they can with one another so that your sandwich, clearly I like food, because that's what I usually use as a descriptor. So now you're gonna have to sew the sandwich together. So I'm actually gonna take it, I want the, as a righty, I want the working yarn on the right side just because I work from right to left. So I'm gonna turn that around. And you wanna be careful now, you're gonna to have to make sure that every single stitch that you create seams all four edges together. So you're gonna put the needle through, making sure you capture all four edges at the same place in the hug with every pass of the needle. This is what will ensure that the twist is even and sits nicely on your forehead. So you can use whatever your preferred seaming method is. So I really like to use the back stitch because it creates a really nice and secure stitch. So the way that you do that is you, you have your first, your first stitch that you create. You're gonna put it back through all four, double checking, go through all four edges. Since my yarn is a little long, I have to help it out and it's okay to pull it tight. This is one time that it's okay to secure it tightly. So now you're gonna take your stitch and you're gonna go back through. And again, I like to do about one stitch distance. So each nub is my barometer for how far to knit. So 
pull it through the front. And this way, now that you're on the set, the first stitch you create is normal, but on the second stitch is when the back stitch occurs because you're actually coming through a stitch ahead and you're creating the stitch by taking the thread backward. And so again, flip it over, make sure it's passing through all four edges. Come out one stitch ahead, go back through that stitch, come out, move ahead one, one bump or one stitch, continuing across evenly. And you continue across this way to the end. You might have to double check and adjust your edges as you go because the four sandwich edges will slip a little in your hand as you work while you're focused on this stitch. And again, any seaming method you use will work. So when you're getting started with your seam, you want to make sure that you're only going down one row to create the seam. Some people accidentally go down like three rows in order to create the seam, and what you end up with is a twist that is really, really thick and a headband that doesn't fit correctly. So I only like to go down one row, which in this case is the cast off edge and the cast on edge row. So that's kind of an easy way to mark it and denote how far to go down is to just use that cast off edge as your indicator. So just about done. The last couple stitches, you have to really make sure you're catching that edge that's hugged in the middle because it's easy for it to kind of fall, fall down and not get picked up. So you have to, you have to do a little bit to make sure that it's getting snagged. So I'd say about one more stitch just to be secure. So then to weave in the end, I just like to use that simple method I showed you in the cast off video of following the stitch. So you see that oxbow of the garter stitch? What I do is I take my darning needle and I just follow that oxbow for like three stitches. Sometimes if I'm really anxious and the yarn feels slippery, I'll do like four or five, but that's pretty excessive. And this is cool because it actually creates an invisible way to weave in your end instead of just creating a double knot, which can create a lump or an unevenness, which when you get further and further into knitting, you'll get more and per more particular about the aesthetics of it. So <laughs> you'll be fussy and not want to see any sort of lump whatsoever. So I just cut it, leaving a pretty short tail that's not going to come out. And now for the big reveal. So here's the wrong side. So let's flip it through. And voila! You have a lovely twisted turban headband. This is a child size that I just cast it off. So this is a great mommy and me set. You can have one for an adult and then this one fits children from around ages 3 to 10 who have had sizes of about 17 inches to 19 inches. So this will fit nicely. It's a little bit narrower than this one and a little bit shorter. So you have yourself a perfect matching set and you actually still have a fair bit of yarn left over all from one skein of brown sheep nature spun yarn. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial on how to create this twisted turban headband from start to finish. I'd love to hear from you if there are other projects you want me to show you how to work on, other stitches, or if you have follow-up questions on some of the techniques that I've shown you. Or similarly, if you're a knitter and you have ideas on how to do some of what I did here in the videos, but in a slightly different way, you never know what's going to resonate with people, so feel free to share your ideas and thoughts in the comments or send me an email at bearsdenessentials at gmail.com. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you love your new knits and this new hobby that you've learned. I hope you take these techniques with you and you fall in love with knitting 
the same way that I have and the same way that countless others have. I look forward to sharing more videos with you in the future. For now, stay warm and thanks again.